and welcome to the Society for American Music's Digital Lecture Series. A quick note before we start. In today's lecture, I'll be touching upon a lot of recordings related to our topic. You'll hear snippets of a few of these recordings, but most will be linked in the Spotify playlist available in the video description. This will let you listen along and support these musicians at the same time. You might have noticed that one name comes up a lot in some of your favorite music, whether you're a fan of rock, rap, blues, or reggae. That name is Stagger Lee. Since his 1895 murder of Billy Lyons in a St. Louis bar, Stack or Stagger Lee Shelton has been immortalized in countless spoken, sung, and printed versions of the Stagger Lee murder ballad, becoming an important part of American oral history and mythology. How does this oral tradition fit into a changing global landscape, and why do so many musicians and audiences still find Stagger Lee relevant? Bands still play the ballad, and rappers even take his name. So why do we still care about Stagger Lee? Today, we'll explore the history of this murder ballad. Where did it come from? And how rooted in historical events is it really? From there, we'll examine two of the less traditional versions of the Stagger Lee legend, The Clash's Wrong and Boyo and The Black Keys' Stackshot Billy, looking for their relationships lyrically and musically to the ballad's history. We will see these rock recordings as parts of a century-long development, as the ballad migrated through a variety of musical genres. In the words of Cecil Brown, Stax serves as a trope for the resentment felt by people marginalized by dominant white society. These newer versions add facets to our understanding of the enduring importance of this American musical tradition for marginalized groups in very different political and social environments. The unique figure of Stagger Lee as Badman has moved beyond geographic, racial, and generic boundaries to live on as an important archetype for marginalized groups around the world. Among American murder ballads, Stagger Lee is one of the best known and most frequently recorded. You might be familiar with some other ballads like Frankie and Johnny. Frankie drew back her kimono. She took out a little 40 bow. Rooty two, two, three times she shot right through that hardwood door. Shot her man. He was doing her wrong. Or in the Pines, which was performed by Nirvana at their unplugged performance in the 90s. Both Frankie and Johnny and Stagger Lee share genre similarities. They're both heavily repetitive, melodically and lyrically, have a relatively narrow range, and have a strong narrative throughout. These traits are often shared with folk song more generally, but the lyrical content separates the murder ballad. The narratives here deal overtly with death, but can change depending on the performer. In Frankie and Johnny, for example, elements of violence and of race are frequently shuttled to the side when they're inconvenient. Just compare Johnny Cash's version with Sam Cooke's. In Cash's, Johnny gets caught almost cheating on Frankie, but changes his ways. Cook's version is true to the actual events that are the basis of the ballad. Frankie shoots the cheating Johnny dead. It's important to understand that the racial and murderous parts are really crucial to these ballads and their origins, though. It's a form with a long history, but even among these ballads, Stagger Lee is a bit different. Initially, this ballad had such a reputation for sinfulness that researchers had difficulty getting a recording of it. But soon blues iterations, like that of Mississippi John Hurt, Police officer, how can it be? You can rest everybody but cruel stagger Lee. Would be followed by rock and folk versions, like those by Lloyd Price, Bob Dylan, and The Grateful Dead. The ballad tells the story of a murder in St. Louis, Missouri's Bloody Third Ward on Christmas night in 1895. Since the story's early history is still cloudy, we'll start with the known facts. Stagger Lee Shelton shot and killed Billy Lyons with a 44 in the Bill Curtis Saloon. Typically, the ballad begins with the dishonest card game between Stack and Billy, and maybe the stealing of Shelton's Stetson hat. From there, things get violent as Lee shoots Billy and is chased by the city's police force. Many ballad versions also say that the police cannot or will not arrest Stagger Lee, but this frequently repeated detail is clearly not true. The real Lee Shelton spent much of his life in jail for this murder and another crime. In early written versions, Stagger Lee is frequently depicted as chasing the devil and ruling hell himself, making him a supreme anti-hero. This much is pretty clear-cut, but some also identify political undertones to the conflict. 
For both Lyons and Shelton, St. Louis's political machine was a fact of life. St. Louis in the late 19th century suffered from the cronyism and machine politics that plagued much of the United States at the time. The Third Ward, in particular, was a concentrated site of corruption, as the Republican Party attempted to hang on to and control the votes of the area's black population. In addition to their card dispute, Lyons and Shelton had political differences, as Lyons' family helped the Republican side, while Shelton fought their control. This complicates Stagger Lee. Yes, he's a murderer, but also a politically active leader for his community. In fact, this story about black men and the forces of law and order takes on even greater significance in the context of contemporary racially charged conflicts with the police, as in the deaths of Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, and so many others. It's not just the story of a murderer, but the story of a man who may have had a target on his back before he even drew his gun. The most important point of disagreement between the versions of Stack's ballad is where the blame should lie with Lyons for his cheating, or Shelton for his remorseless violence. Most versions tend to paint Stagger Lee as a bad man who defies authority without care for the consequences. But an important strain of the tradition also explicitly celebrates him for appropriately punishing Lyons. Really though, both strains celebrate Stagger Lee. In the first, he's a symbol for fearless black manhood in the face of authority. But in the second, his bravado is on the side of moral righteousness. This distinction is small, but it's important because it changes the way Stagger Lee's story will be used. In London Calling's Wrong and Boyo, Shelton's murder of Lyons is not something to fear. Instead, the lesson here is that Lyons' deceit and cheating are in the wrong. The Clash celebrate the outlaw as a moral force. On the flip side, in their 2004 recording, the Black Keys embellish existing ballad versions to keep Stack Lee as a much more conflicted character. While tapping into the same musical history, these two versions accomplish very different ends through the same character. They show us what layers of meaning this 19th century murder ballad can carry. The Clash's stack ballad, Wrong and Boyo, is a cover of the 1967 song by the Jamaican band The Rulers. It appears on the band's seminal 1979 album, London Calling. Much of the reggae, rock steady, and dub that The Clash borrows tends, like this song, to be concerned with law and order and the inability of the established forces of good to police this. A version of the Stagger Lee ballad fits perfectly within this theme, and The Clash even alter the ballad to make its political content more direct. After the piano-driven blues opening section, The Clash's recording sticks close to the rulers in style, but its lyrical content comes from other Stagger Lee iterations you'll find some similarity between this version and Lloyd Price's. Singer Joe Strummer fleshes out the tale of Billy and Stagger, where the rulers stick to moralizing repetition for this rock steady section. The third verse in this section is almost entirely The Clash's own new lyrics, which not only delve deeper into the Stagger Lee tale, but also take a side in the conflict. Strummer tells us it is wrong to cheat the Stagger man, and in fact, it doesn't work out for Billy, as Stagger Lee's come out on top. While the rulers don't explicitly judge either party in the dispute, Strummer's version makes it clear that Billy is in the wrong. The Clash's version celebrates the moral integrity of the anti-hero in this situation. We can interpret the Clash's use of Stack as an archetype. His story is meant to resonate for us, even though the Clash's audience in Britain in the late 1970s would have had very little connection to Stack the actual man. Their version is powerful and specific, it doesn't sanitize the legend's history, and it definitely tells us whose side we should be on. It's a good example of the continuing power of Stack Lee as a figure. If the Clash are turning Stagger Lee into a moral victor, the Black Keys and Stack Shot Billy instead revel in the character's badness. Tapping into a strain of the Stagger Lee ballad that includes those by Woody Guthrie and a contemporary, very explicit reimagining by Nick Cave, the Keys do not try to rehabilitate Stack. Here, his lack of virtue is a virtue. Unlike The Clash, Akron, Ohio's Black Keys seem to be much better candidates to record a version of the Stackley Ballad. The blues rock duo is known for their love of American blues and musical traditions. In addition to their Stackshot Billy, the band has also covered lots of blues songs. 
The recording of Stackshot Billy comes from an understanding and appreciation of American blues, though it's separated chronologically, socially, and geographically from the ballad's origins. Musically and lyrically, this version of the ballad is more traditional than The Clashes. Though Stackshot Billy is an original composition and lacks a clear template, Dan Auerbach's guitar technique and improvisational style show the influence of innovators like Junior Kimbrough and Lighton Hopkins. The song's repetitive form, too, draws a clear connection to earlier Stagger Lee ballads, as recorded by Mississippi John Hurt and others. The most notable departures from the tradition come in the lyrics. First and foremost, here Stack's story is not as thoroughly fleshed out as in earlier versions. We learn almost nothing of his motivations or the situation surrounding the murder. No card game here. The Black Keys amplify certain aspects of the bad man reputation of Stack Lee. Here he loves his gun and his sweet cocaine. The Stagger Lee of Stackshot Billy is not the righteously vindictive character we find in The Clash's version, but instead he's a troubled man, bent on motiveless murder, who loves his vices. In this reincarnation, Stagger Lee is a figurehead for the frustration and rebellion that many young people felt when the Keys recorded this version, as the U.S.'s economy crept toward its recent recession. The Black Keys play more on the social and political aspects of the original incident. This version of the anti-hero recognizes that he's beyond redemption, as he knew soon enough that he'd burn in hell. Stackshot Billy values Stack for his ability to live outside of the constricting conditions of his environment. By drawing on this American folkloric tradition of the anti-hero, think of that other famous St. Louis murder ballad, Frankie and Johnny, the Black Keys song embraces Stagger Lee as a conflicted character, who, though he travels through hell, continues on his own chosen path. These two versions of the Stagger Lee legend are very different from one another, and from the oral tradition of the story, but both continue the folkloric understanding of this character as a champion for the marginalized. By retelling the ballad, with its American racial roots, through the idiom of the Caribbean, filtered through a distinctly British musical style, the Clash make a version of the Stackley legend which speaks to the racial and colonial tensions unique to their historical moment. A punk Stagger Lee, then, positions his rebellious yet morally sound behavior in opposition to racial profiling, police brutality, and rioting, rather than the economic deprivation and different form of institutionalized racism present in Stack's 1895 St. Louis. Drawing on the history of Stagger Lee, the Clash claim this century-old rebel for their own. The same folkloric character accomplishes a very different sort of commentary in the Key's hands. This newer version of the Stagger Lee ballad seems to abandon some of the swaggering, more celebratory aspects of the ballad tradition, focusing instead on the bleak situation in which the Lion's Shelton murder occurs. As Cecil Brown writes, many other versions of the Stagger Lee legend also reference Lee's death and journey to hell, but without fear and remorse. For the audiences of these versions, Brown argues, meeting with the devil represented a chance for escape from their current, overwhelming troubles. Even against the ultimate bad man himself, often synonymous with the white man and the police in traditional settings of the ballad, our anti-hero continues to hold his own. This is really the strain in the Staggerly tradition that shows the reason for his longevity in the blues, work songs, chants, rock songs, and our American consciousness. Namely, that regardless of circumstances, Stack Lee serves as a reminder for the power of rebellion. We're only scratching the surface here, though, so keep listening and exploring the Stagger Lee ballad. <laughs>